Welcome to another video. Because I have spent so much time trying to explain how to do this problem and resolving the controversy over the actual answer. Because a lot of students think the answer is zero and many students think the answer is does not exist. And I've had to go through this explanation several times to pick a side. Now, I want you to uh, compute this limit and in the comment section, tell me what you thought right from the beginning was the solution to this limit. Um, but I'm going to solve it in both ways and then pick a side because my side is the right side. Let's get into the video. If I was asked to compute this limit, and I was not a student, what would I do? I'm just gonna take my limit and you see what I get. So what I'm gonna say is, well, if I plug in five immediately, I'm gonna get zero over zero. So this is a, um, an indefinite, an indeterminate form rather. So instead of that, I'll do some algebraic manipulation or use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, because I really am not a fan of L'Hopital's rule and L'Hopital's rule will be nasty because of the square root sign underneath. So I, I, just, I just would just do algebraic manipulation. And it's easy because this is difference of two squares. So see what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that this is equal to um, the limit as x travels to 0.5 and we're gonna get x minus five on top and under what I'm gonna have is the square root of, um, let me write it out first. I'm gonna have x minus five times x plus 5. Okay, now this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to 5 of x minus 5 divided by, so I'm going to split this into two radicals, okay? What I get is this can be divided, now just note this, that the square root of, if you divide any number by its own square root, the answer is the square root. It's easy, because see, if you multiply these two together, you're gonna end up with two. So that's the idea behind this. This is gonna be equal to the limit as x goes to five of, if you divide x minus five by square root of x minus five, you end up with square root of x minus five. And under you end up with the square root of x plus five. So this is basically what our limit is. And now, can we plug in five? Well, if you plug in, x as x goes to 5 rather. If you plug in 5 here, you're going to get 0, 5 minus 5, and here you're going to get 10. So 0 over 10 gives you 0. So this is going to be equal to 0 over 10, which is equal to 0. So this is one um, side of the argument that the answer to this is 0. Is it possible for you to just plug in x equals 5? Can you plug in x equals 5 immediately here? Are you saying that if I am approaching 5 from the right, I'm going to get the same answer as if I'm approaching 5 from the left? Because, watch this, if we treat this as a two-sided limit, let me start from here, okay. Taking two-sided limits, we're going to have a question. Are you saying that the limit as x goes to 5 from the left of the square root of x minus 5 over square root of x plus 5, are you saying it is equal this is a question now, equal to the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of the same function, x minus 5 over square root of x plus 5. Now, I will not dwell on this because if you're approaching 5 from the right, it's more or less what we did here, okay? But if you're approaching from the left, this one, note this, any value that is to the left of 5 is less than 5. So what you're saying is 
four point, let's take 4.99 for example, 4.99 minus 5 is going to be negative 0.01. That means you're going to have a negative number under the radical sign and you can't have that. So the conclusion in this argument is this limit on the left hand side does not exist because we're talking about limits, we're talking about real numbers, okay? When we talk about r r limits, as far as real, um, real, real functions are concerned, we have to st stick to real numbers. So you can plug in a negative number under the radical sign. Even, this, this is gonna, even though this is gonna be um, still positive, but this is gonna be a negative number under the radical sign, so this limit does not exist. This limit exists. So what does not exist is not equal to what exists. So altogether, the limit does not exist. That is the second argument. So since the limit as x approaches 5 of x minus 5 over square root of x squared minus 25 does not exist. This is the second argument. So the question is, which of these arguments will you have to stick to? This one or this one? Because the only reason we did the two-sided limit is because this is a radical. If it was not a radical, it would be done here. But being a radical, you have to be careful what you plug in here. Can you plug in values of x less? Well, we found out that you cannot do that. So, what's my answer? Well, this is my answer. The first part is still the answer, because whatever you're doing here does not make any sense. So here is the graph of this function. You notice that there's a huge gap from negative five to five. Negative five is not involved. You can easily tell that the domain of this function is from negative infinity to just before 5 of can x be equal to 5 x cannot be equal to 5 so it is from sorry to negative 5 and then from 5 to infinity this is what we have as the domain so the notion that you can approach 5 from the left does not make any sense because you're talking of values of x that are less than 5, but very close to 5. But those values don't exist in the domain of this function. If a number does not fit in the domain, you can't use it. You can't plug in numbers. It's just like plugging in negative 5 into the logarithm, the natural log of any function. Because we know the natural log function for real functions is not defined for negative numbers. So the same thing. This function is not defined for numbers that are from negative 5 all the way to positive 5. So this huge gap cannot be plugged into the function. Therefore, the notion of approaching 5 from the left does not apply to the number to this function. The correct idea is to know that a square root function is a one-sided limit. You only approach from the right or from whatever portion makes sense. If we were approaching the limit from to negative 5 also, that's the same thing we would have done. Okay, we would have only approached from the left. You cannot approach negative five from the right. There's too much gap. So, if there is no road, you cannot just create a road. The function is the road, and the road is leading you to five. There is no road to the left that will lead you here. So if you're ever gonna travel, okay, and you need to drive, consider this the ocean, and this is the only road that will lead you to five. This road will never lead you to five. So it's a one-sided approach, and the only correct answer is zero. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.